professor and producer. Lauren Passarelli does it all. She saw her dream at age three when the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan, and since then she has continued to go after it. If there was anything I knew about myself, I knew I had to pursue guitar and pursue music and write my own songs. I knew that I wanted to come to Berkeley as a student when I was 11. Following her dream wasn't always easy. Her family was supportive. Lauren and her brother got plastic guitars at Christmas, and when she was older, she got a new Stratocaster when all the other kids got new bikes. But like most parents, the Passarellis worried. Well, they always wanted me to grow out of it. They always wanted to be more so wanted me to more, be more social, uh, get out more. They couldn't understand why I wanted to stay in and play with tape recorders and play with guitars. And, you know, they thought, oh my God, is she being socialized properly, you know? I mean, they were really glad when I had to take flute in high school, you know, because sometimes to play in the jazz band, you had to play a concert instrument and march and be in the marching band and all that. So, um, wasn't going to march with a guitar, uh, they, they thought that was more of a feminine instrument. But Lauren stuck with the guitar, and off she went, leaving New Jersey for the Berklee College of Music, in which, like the real world, Lauren was a minority, the only woman in most of her classes. But she didn't let it bother her or cause her to lose sight of her goals. We didn't think about it much. I mean, it always felt weird if you were the only one in a class, and that happened a lot to me and to others. Um, but. It was more uh, concentrating real hard and working real hard and knowing that you had to be as good as you possibly could be. Number one, because that was what you promised yourself and why you wanted to come to Berkeley to begin with. And then number two, because if half the guys weren't prepared, you can show them up. You know, and they were like, oh, geez, if a chick can do it, we've got to be able to do it. You know? teachers too because they'd always be thinking is she looking over the paper or is she cheating there or you know like how does she know how to play that but you know i had done a lot of ear training and like classes like performance ear training they play something and then they expect each student to play it back and they don't tell you what they're playing and they don't let you watch you have to just play it by ear and i remember a couple of teachers that i had for that course you know looking at me like you know does she have x-ray vision or what you know <laughs> Graduation wasn't the end of Lauren's relationship with Berkeley. In 1984, she returned to be on the other side of the music stand as an instructor, the first female to join the 36-member guitar department faculty, a position which hasn't brought immediate acceptance by some of her peers. I've actually been in guitar department meetings, and the teachers will completely forget I'm there. They don't care, because it's nine years now. They're used to me. It's like, oh, <laughs> the token woman, so, so what? We can say anything we want. And they'll actually say, well, this guy came to me and he wanted to study with me because he wanted to learn to play the guitar like a man. You know? You know, I'll look over at the other woman teacher, you know, and say, what kind of, ex what was that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, as if guitar is a man's instrument or that only men can play. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's absolutely not true. Just ask her students. She's a guitar player, you know. She plays well, doesn't really matter about the sex. Her gender didn't surprise me, just her size, I guess. It's actually cool having a female guitar teacher to teach you, because you see, like, uh, different ways of approaching. Not that it's all that different from a guy a guy teacher's way of approaching, but it's just cool. It's been a blast. It's been a... <laughs> well, I, I've had a, a... When I first came here, I had another guitar teacher who was a... He could teach her a good player, but he didn't really focus on the things I was really intro into. Whereas Lawrence Moore, a songwriter, which is what I'm pretty much interested in. And uh, he seemed to get along pretty well. And uh, it's been very helpful. As a professor, Lauren has taken the mission of the college to provide practical career preparation for today's professional music to heart. Probably my biggest thing as a teacher is trying to combine the art and the business and uh, showing people that they don't have to compromise themselves and they can have a career. It is a professional life beyond Berkeley, her record label and production company, which fuel what she does as a professor. I think it makes me a better teacher because if I was only going by the book and taking care of the syllabus and uh, 
just take care of requirements, um, things would seem a little bit dry. Feather Records and Too True are Lauren and her partner, keyboardist Cindy Brown. The couple work out of their home in Winchester, where they have converted a bedroom into a recording studio. They consider themselves the Ben and Jerry's of the music industry, making it on their own terms and letting other musicians do the same. I'm helping uh, other bands and my own band to carve a niche for ourselves in the record industry and building up followings for each of those bands and that's what a lot of young players are trying to do. There would have to be some uh, women's touch or something with that but I think it's more because we're artists and we're valuing that art above uh, regular business decisions or just money decisions. And um, there's a lot of, of detail. I mean, just as people, we're more uh, detail-oriented and real specific about getting things the way we want. Um, perfectionists or something. <laughs> But that way, when it's your own studio, and it's your own company, and it's your own time, and it's your own money, you get things the way you want. The care they put into their work shows. Their first full CD, Among the Ruins, has been described as a delight from start to finish. A musical marvel, beautiful and well-crafted. Their songs are sensitive, emotional, personal. And they start all different ways, and uh, sometimes they take 15, 20 minutes, sometimes they take three months. <laughs> A couple of them take years. Mm -hmm. I think I'll sit down and finish one and I start writing a different one. And mm -hmm. These are funny things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things will just spark it off. Like when we started, we were playing Steel City mm -hmm. and um, there was some construction going on in this building where I was working and uh, the little slugs from the outlet boxes were on the floor and I picked one up because it looked like you know, the nickel things. Oh, yeah. And it said Steel City on it. I said, oh, okay, Steel City, is it good? Right now, Too True is preparing to work on the follow-up to Among the Ruins. Lauren is putting together the new lineup for the band, bringing together the right mix of players to start recording. And even now, 30 some odd years later, her original influence still inspires her. The Beatles are just still incredible to me. <laughs> Uh...